Hey everyone, Sir Jellybean here, and we are back with Court Arms Gates for Osfront. And this is basically my tutorial about how to set up a conquest and the basics of a conquest, a dynamic campaign. So we'll get straight into it. So obviously you will find conquest under the single player tabs. And here it is, conquest, dynamic campaign, conquer enemy territories in randomized skirmish battles. So how do you go about setting one up? So just click on conquest and then you'll have obviously multiple options. You'll be on create conquest. And here you go. So you'll have your conquest name. Let's call it whatever you want. We're going to call this tutorial. One, 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 one. And then you have your chosen nation, obviously Germany, the USSR, Russia. And if you have the DLC, Finland. But obviously some of you won't. So the base nations are Germany and Russia. Now you also have difficulties. What do these mean? Well, they actually explain. So for instance, easy difficulty reduces enemy infantry health, reduces enemy weapon accuracy, things like that. And as you move up, it obviously gets gradually more difficult. So for instance, I tend to play on hardcore. Slightly reduces enemy infantry health, or the stats are at a standard value. And then economy. Now, this manages how much, for instance, starting resources, resource gained after each battle, cost to repair and resupply units. And basically, you go from easy to hardcore, hardcore being the hardest. Personally, the best option for me. But if you are starting, I advise normal and then working your way up. Campaign size is the, the amount of a. Uh, missions you have to win to come to you know to finish it because people say oh well, small campaign's tiny well if you don't win many matches your conquest will be longer so if you win 10 and lose 10 it will take you 20 matches to win where when you're on a very large conquest if you lose like 30 battles or 20 battles over the conquest you'll have to fight about 60 battles to win so a good option is to start a medium see how you do and then go to very large and when you finish a conquest as well a campaign should i say you can make it all limited anyway so very large is normally the best option and enable fog of war i would say yes fog of war makes the game a lot better a lot more tactical but if you're just starting out maybe you want to turn it off and then that way you can see enemy units easier just to you know get used to the game but personally keep fog of war on it will make you a better player in the long run so we're going to do a let's just say germany hardcore core hardcore very large and then we're going to go into the conquest so it's just setting up it'll take a few seconds not long at all and there we go, we have started. So we'll go through the basics. Operation day one, it's the first day, obviously. And we'll just go have a look at the map and explain that. So this is our HQ where we start the enemy HQ. And the objective of the dynamic conquest, the campaign, is to win battles. These are these dots and get all the way over here. Now, because you do an attack and defend, I believe the minimum amount of battles you can do to win is about 30 or 31 on a very large campaign, obviously depending on the size. And when you're attacking, for instance, you have the option to choose any of these, depending on what you need, and you get various different resources. Now, I'm going to just quickly explain what they mean. So risk, the higher the risk, the more resources you get. It doesn't tend to make a difference of what enemy you face when there's higher risk. So I would just say, if you want more resources, take the highest amount of risk you can with the resource you want. Depending on what resources you need, you can get manpower, which is, as you can see, the small kind of um, shield-looking thing at the left. There's munitions, which is the ammunition sign there. And there's research, which is the research vial, the kind of chemist bottle vial there. Research unlocks things. Manpower helped by units and munitions resupplies things. There's your three resources. And you'll get different maps and different seasons depending on what you click. So, for instance, here would be 200 manpower, 100 munitions, research, two-star risk. And the season is summer. And if you said confirm, you'll get the map Van Ikalan. Now, if you switch that, for instance, you would get this one. One star is 200 manpower, 900 munitions in the, in the winter. And the map is Rezev. So different maps, different things. So that's the basics of the maps and how the campaign works. An attack and a defense. You'll attack first, then the enemy attacks you and you're on the defense. So pretty simple. I'm sure you're all used to that. Next, we have the reinforcement screen. These are the units you can purchase but haven't yet purchased. So for instance, we could get an officer. We could get a sessional squad basic infantry. And you have obviously your manpower here, 800. You have your support stars, which are for these, for your call-ins, which you can unlock. And you have your research points, which will explain in a sec. But manpower, yeah, as you can see, you can purchase anything that you're able to buy. So for instance, oh, I can purchase a session squad. Ta-da. Now, what do I do there? I drag the session squad over into the veterans. Now, veterans doesn't mean veterans. It means the units you have purchased. It's a bit misleading. I've seen a few questions with this. That is simply the units you have purchased and are able to use to deploy to the battlefield. So don't think, oh, I've unlocked the officer, I've got one. No, until you drag him over, now you've got one. So you've purchased him. And remember, be careful. If you drag them back over and sell them, you get less points. See, dismiss gets you 37 points. But to buy them is 74. 
Some people occasionally drag things back and forth, and guess what? Look, you lose points. 703, there, down 629, back over, and you've lost points. So you can actually bankrupt yourself. So you've got to be a little bit careful there. Obviously, I've just wasted some points. Now, research as well. These are the research points. This is important. These are the things you can unlock. So, for instance, some things will cost zero research, calling stage two. We can get that. Or you have to buy things so you can then purchase them. Research points are your probably most valuable resource early on. And as you can see, you've got to be careful what you're going to choose. Now, depending on how you play, you know, it's up to you what you choose. It's kind of an impossible decision because some people like tanks, some people like infantry, some people like mortars. You go with what you feel is best, and the best way to learn that is just playing. Don't say, oh, what should I buy first? Just go in, make some random choices, mess up a conquest. Best way to learn. But, you know, you've got research points. What you do is, if you want to, for instance, buy... Oh, let's see. Um... Field engineers, that will cost two. You click it, and as you can see, two research points. And you can either click research select to buy, or you can unselect. The best thing to do, though, is always use the buttons if you want to buy or not. But for right now, we're not going to buy anything. But actually, we'll purchase something just here. We're going to buy infantry squad, which is our choice. We're going to select research selected. And as you can see, the rifle squad is now available to purchase. We will purchase one. Now, we've done the veteran screen in there. You've also got munitions up here. That is what you'll be using at the end of the battles to resupply your troops. Now, there is a little bit of a tip here as well. If you buy things like ammo crates and put them in, you can resupply your troops in battle and it will save you munitions, especially useful when you buy bigger tanks, bigger infantry units. They can be quite resource intensive. Now, now we're in the veteran screen, when you actually want to deploy things to the battlefield, to the map you've chosen, and you always need to deploy at least one unit or you can't start the battle, as you can see, drag the rifle squad over or the officer over or whatever and put them in your deployment. As you can see, see that little 20 there? That's your population cap. Things take not just manpower to buy, but also population caps. So you can't bring, for instance, 30 rifle squads in the first wave. It limits your army size until you upgrade your um, call-in stages. So as you can see, you've got a rifle squad there, and now I'm going to drop the officer in, and now have access to the officer. So you have to put them in the deployment box. And remember, keep them in the veterans bit. Don't drag them back here, or you'll sell them, and you'll lose points. Um, support stages, we'll just go through this a bit. Once you unlock support, so I'm just going to unlock some support here just to show you. Um, for instance, medium smoke barrage, click that. Now I have access to the medium smoke barrage, and you drag them over into your veterans first. I've purchased it for the cost of, what was it, one support star. And then, as you can see here, there is a special calling screen just for the support, and that takes up 16 in the support screen. So they also have a lot, so you can't bring 15 artillery barrages. You can only bring as many as you can fit in, so you have to be wary of that. Another thing as well, you can, a little tip, you can obviously preview the map there, as I've shown earlier, that will give you a little bit of an idea, like, oh, Rezeb, open, trenches, useful to know. And when you're looking at things, there is a bit of a pain in the arse thing. You do get the stats of units, but they don't tell you how much ammunition they carry. So a lot of things are hidden. A lot of things you will only learn by playing in the actual game. So, for instance, if I chose, let's have a look at the, oh, let's pick one, Panzer 1F. It tells me, oh, it's got MGs. It tells me what it doesn't tell me. It carries about 2,000 rounds of ammunition. It doesn't tell you that it carries a satchel charge. It doesn't tell you that, you know, all the different bits that are in the inventory. I do have tutorials on that, but you just have to play the game to learn it. Unfortunately, some of the information is kind of hidden in the game. They could do a better, you know, way of representing it. But for now, you just have to kind of make do with the stats here. But they are pretty useful. Another little tip as well I will give you. So, for instance, everyone will be looking at more penetration. If you do something like buy a Panzer II and you switch to the high explosive rounds during the battle, when it's back on the veteran screen, it will show the penetration for the last round loaded. So some people will come back and say, wait a minute, why is my tank all of a sudden only got 30 millimeters of penetration? Whereas it had 49 millimeters before. That's because you've loaded the high explosive shells and left them in before the battle. And sometimes if you have armor piercing composite rigid, it will have higher penetration shown. So some so just always look at the base models on the left side of the screen at the penetration. Because it will normally show the base armor piercing round penetration. So, for instance, for the Panzer 3L, its base penetration with an armor piercing round is 102 max. If you load the high explosive shell, it goes down to about 60 millimeters. So, always just click on the left side of the reinforcement screen to get that penetration um, stat that's correct for the standard armor piercing round. Because some people are getting confused with that. It's a little bit of a tip there. And that's the basics covered, I think. I think we've covered the basics of it. And then like I say, that this is just to explain how to buy units, how to sell them. And like I say, just play the game. Best way is play the game. And your first conquest, you will probably mess up and do something stupid. I did that many times. 
Just play it. Just think of it as a throwaway one. Go on medium. Kill lots of troops. Let some tanks blow up. Waste some points, you know. Especially on the research tree. You're going to go. You're gonna get halfway through your first conquest, and I guarantee you're going to say, crap, I didn't want to go down that line. Because there's a lot of, for instance, dead-end lines. Whereas the more best, you know, the best line for you is what you work out. And what is best for some people, like, oh, I rush for the Tigers. That ain't always going to be the best for you. You know, you might be an infantry player. You might be an artillery more. Use, use artillery. You might like to use anti-tank guns. Just find what's best for you. And also, it might be helpful, for instance, if you go look in the Steam Workshop, there are mods to unlock everything from the start, so you can just play with the units. So you know the Unlimited Resources mods. I, I can't remember them off by heart, but just have a look at Steam Workshop. There's loads for unlimited manpower, or, you know, unlimited research points, unlimited munitions. Just play around so you can use all the units early on, because, you know, that's the best way to get a feel for things. Anyway, I think we've covered all the basics in that conquest. I don't think I've missed anything. I hope that clears up a few questions for you. And yeah, thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you on the next one. Have a fantastic evening.